Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So we have a 2009 Mercedes E320 Blue Tech. This is uh, this car belongs to one of my subscribers, uh, Mark. Thank you for coming and stopping by, and hopefully I can fix up your car. Uh, so the, his complaint is the well, he loves he loves the car. He he had it not too long ago. It's a it looks like a really well maintained vehicle. He said that he was driving to like Tennessee or something, you know, some areas like that, and he was, you know, starting to enjoy the car, go a little bit more free on the gas and so on, and then uh, out of the blue, the lean mode uh, showed up into the cluster. So he had a, a launch code reader, uh, it's a little bit more than a code reader, so he was able to erase the code and keep going, but, you know, since then it's been happening. I explained him that these cars are well known as the GDI systems on, you know, the newer vehicles. This is a diesel engine, but it's pretty much the same system, same system. So the intake valves, they get, you know, stuck with carbon deposits, the EGR, the recirculation tubes and everything. So I'm going to connect the scanner right now to see what we got. I got the ignition on. For this one, I'm using Sentry. So let's uh, let me go over it with you guys to see, see what I don't get that much of a glare. So <coughs> let's ID the vehicle first. And we need to get the bin. So I'm just gonna take a little. I'm just typing the bin number. So hold on, with you? You know, just a second, guys. That's the type of engine, type of transmission. And then from here we go to diagnosis. We don't need to read all this. I hope that we got the code because you know he's been driving the car. I didn't see any chicken light on and no lean mode on the dash, so I might have to recreate the, the prom and drive the car a little bit. Let me stop this and not to hold you guys in here for too long because I mean it's just determining the vehicle so let me stop it and if it comes back quick and I will set up the video for sure again. Alright we're back in business so from here we will select control units you can do a quick test too but I don't want to go through everything okay we select the drive and First one, CDI4 and CDI5, common rail, which is this vehicle too. All right, this is gonna be another communication period of time. All right, that's okay. It's just warnings. Now let's see what kind of codes we have here. All right, we have 
Knox Regeneration Lambda value is too high. And that is a store, but I don't have anything else. Let's see what we got here. Information wise, there are no further tests at present. Alright, so we cannot do anything information wise per here. Okay, it looks like I'm going to have to drive this vehicle, so let me stop the video, reproduce if the symptom, and I will get back to the video, guys. All right, guys, I switched the gears a little bit. I'm going to use the hotel for this one just because it's easier, less cables, less bulk. This is just the tab, so. I hope it's not going to be too shaky. I got the camera hooked up to the sunroof with a suction cup. Now let's get the car ID. Okay, that's correct. Check that out the door. Right, this is going to be this one. This left side of the steering. And that is correct. We go to diagnosis. I'm going to try to stay close to the shop because if the car goes into lean mode it's going to have very very limited uh, handling or power uh, so let's go to control unit again drive you're going to go here car has a very beautiful idle again there is no chicken in line now that knocks uh, code it was just in history yeah it's a store so I'm not going to use that one yet as a part of the problem which is most likely is but this value too high can also be part of a fuel trim issues or something else so let's go to the leave data let me see what we will correct here. I mean, pick up here. Running is smooth. High pressure control. Should it be loose pressure control? Uh, engine and idle. So we can check the boost pressure right now. Let me see what this test does. select the pitch we want to see check that pressure see if we have any back pressure that's for you guys to see that is very important because I'm suspect that we might have some leaks on the intake Let's see what else we got here well, looks like we can pick up all the, one of them there are not many more, so what did this do? Accelerator, idle engine. Mm, that's not what I want to go. One second. Because <clears throat> I really, really like to have the mouth in here, so no, let's not use this one. Shake the engine and idle speed of store engine. Just a particle. 
hit the high pressure control. I put real pressure control operating point. The pan is uh, no. Shift the EGR. The equal in temperature and you know briefly flip the throttle. And as a chief again the balance shall be within the specs for round. Let's see what we got here. As you guys can see here, we got some issues in, with the MAP sensors. <coughs> it should be between 213 to 253, 215 to 255. That's why they're in red. As you can see, that is idle. So, that for me, we have some meter air, meaning that we have some leaks. All right, so do we have anything else in here? No, no. All right, so let's record this. I'm gonna use this uh, data list because we had boot, boost pressure here, which is the bottom one. It's still, you know, considered in between right values. I don't like the ones in the map sensor, so let's go for the test, for the test drive. And I hope the camera is not shaking too much. say it or not the car has a hundred and eight thousand miles feels very nice and tight suspension wise I'm taking this back road from the shop not taking any highway yet this new exit there uh, they just did over to route 28 which is nothing and there is no home no homes or nothing so it's a good spot for you know putting a little bit more of a throttle to the cars especially with like you know limp mode or lack of power feels very very smooth you can see that we got some differences in between one side to the other side map sensor I will suspect to have uh, leaks on the intake hoses this is a turbo engine so that's a very very first thing to look when you have any any issues like this I hope I can reproduce the symptom and get the limp mode uh, on it. He told me something about uh, okay, I felt it a little bit in there. Yeah, there is no power now. I can barely go 35 miles an hour. I'm pressing the gas down. There is nothing in there. drive so let me go to manual see if I can shift and make it go I'm gonna go around this back to drive I didn't have any limp mode message 
yet. Yeah, this is dead now. Let me go over to manual shifting. So with manual shifting, I was able to make it go up. Accelerator respond. Back again in here. That is dead in there. If I let it on drive, automatic shifting, the car is dead. I like to know which gear is showing because if I go manual. Now for gear, third gear, it's high idle, and I can make it go. something else or let's uh, stop the recording let me go back to I want to go over to transmission I don't like that you know I just see the D I don't know if it's in first second third or fifth you know so let me see if the transmission is actually shifting or not so let's go to the data uh, shift programs I guess You know, this I need. Transmission mode. Calculated it is inactive. Because I guess I have the brake pedal on. Transmission temperature. I don't like this too, not being read. Let's get that. And then release the Ryan. So let's show this and record this too. Well, let's see what we can see here. I want to be driving in and looking at the scanner at the same time. So I'm in drive, again, there's nothing in there, I think it's yeah, showing us I'm in fifth gear, you guys can see that, went down to four, manually, third gear, four gear, and fifth gear. If I go like that, it's fine. So I'm going to this stop right here. I'm gonna go again into drive, I'm manual driving, so we go into the automatic system. Which gear is shown? First gear, that's fine. Implausible, okay, I didn't like that. It's shifting super fast. So that was not even 20 meters or driving. I'm in fifth gear. Implausible calculations, fifth gear, sixth gear. So we have another issue here. I'm in sixth gear. <laughs> I'm driving at 40 miles per hour with no acceleration. So that's car tried to pick, you know, to pick up seven gear now. So that is weird, weird, weird. Right now, a stop.
gonna turn around. You guys take a look at this what it says inactive right now I got the brake on so all right it's just starting the first gear it should not change that quick first gear now is stuck in first gear oh wait a second guys that was my mistake I guess I wasn't I thought it wasn't regular driving Plausible second gear. See, it's switching too fast. I'm already in fourth gear. That's, that should be. I'm driving 25 miles per hour and it's in fifth gear. So something is tricky here. Let me go back to the shop and see what we can read on the transmission. Okay, that was super weird shifting it goes from first to sixth gear in like three seconds you can see it starts in first gear first gear see it's going to third gear which it should not really and it goes to implausible I'm driving 25 miles per hour and it's going already in fifth gear and that's why I have no power because if I go to manual, right here should be more like a third gear. That is four, and it's still now I got power, so I'm power. If I go to third gear, I can raise it up. Four gear. One thing that I know too is uh, A high RPM for the shifting when I'm doing a manual. So here is a good speed 45. When well, you already got you know the speed you want, fifth gear will be okay. Uh, so let's go back to the shop. See if we have any codes on the engine or in the transmission as well. That is third gear, so I'm in second gear inside the plaza where the shop is located. I'm driving 15 miles an hour, 1500 RPMs. You will expect to stay there, maybe, maybe shift the third which will be still good and I still got some power if I do that with the manual shifting All right, let me turn this off I'm in park now let me turn the camera off and check the video make sure it's not too shaky I'm still sitting in the shop I'm in the car in the shop I want to show you guys I went over to codes and I have no codes on the transmission which is weird I really didn't like the way this transmission is shifting as you can see we got no codes <coughs> no codes in there let's go back to the engine and see if we've got anything else beside that besides that Nox Okay, now we got something else. Okay, so as you can see, we got 2359-1. Check the system charge pressure control, too low push pressure. And then 23592, check the system charge pressure control, pressure too high. So that is what I'm seeing very weird. You have a low boost pressure and then a high boost pressure 
with charge pressure, sorry. So let me go into the information of these two codes and we go from there. At least we were able to reproduce the symptom, which is, you know, I was driving normal for like, I'll probably say maybe half a mile. As soon as I hit like, let's say the highway, which is truly not a highway, it's just a, an exit to get to the highway, which is like three miles long. I went to normal driving to dead. I mean, the only way for me to pick up a little bit of speed, it was to go into manual shift in which, I mean, I felt the weird, the way the car was shifting from first to sixth gear, like so quick. But again, I didn't have any accelerator response, even when I do that, unless I go again manually, and then I was able to pick up a little bit more of RPMs in a speed but as you see and there is no cause under transmission temperature on the transmission was fine uh, good thing about this a scanner well I mean any other scanners does have it too so you can go to data manager and you can go to review data we have two because I saved the one uh, for the engine first so if we go through this we know that all these values in here below 215 will be considered problem. And you saw in the video that that stays in red. Boost pressure. Yeah, as you can see right there is when we have a little bit of a, like that, that will be considered high uh, charge pressure. think so let me see this a little bit I like this to analyze the, the data when you're having a problem like this save it and you can go back and see a normal and after repair so we have some different issues in here integrator pressure let me go back to the other one on the transmission. See one thing I don't like, well that's in park. Let me go back to drive. Right there is what I don't like. Turbine speed, output is speed. Look at the difference in between these two. Select the gear as in third gear transmission temperature seems okay sure it's a little cold 160 something and through the whole thing uh, yeah the whole thing doesn't even warm up this I think this in here what it says zero even in that I'm in drive so you can see there is no gear calculator is because probably I'm was just a stand-in stop you know as soon as you're going to gear it's to change I don't like this big of a difference I guess I'll have to see the ratio but let's go over to where we have a six gear well six gear five gear so the ratios gets more more tight as you can see probably you know the fifth gear, sixth gear is one on one. So we can assume that that is still considered correct, and probably that's why the transmission is not setting up a, a code. I don't like that one right here. I mean, we're sh in between shiftings and then goes to implausible. And that is logic that can be the plate on the transmission. Temperature is still considered fine, or it's always fine. It doesn't change much in the whole scenario. We can see the difference of gear ratio in there. And that's not right, right now in the shop. So. Again, let me let me go back to um, 
let me get that, you know, into identifix and search for some information. Even I have sentries so I can read those codes and see what sentry tells me and what identifix, uh, identifix tell me. I will show you that too. So let me just get laptops ready and uh, show you the guys uh, to you guys too. Okay. All right, guys. I got the sentry computer on, and I have also identifix, and I got the scanner right here, which I record some of the information. I was looking for the back pressure information I couldn't have find. Looks like I didn't save that. Uh, maybe in the video when I was uh, saving all that information because, uh, well, let me show you first Identifix. So on Identifix, uh, based on that code, uh, which is a, let me go back. Yeah, if I look for the code 2359, which we have 2359.001 and 002, so an identifix is a little uh, ambiguous because it's just one code. So we have uh, repair a boost leak after a code for low boost was found. Now I have code 2553. So that is different. Let me read the first one. So most of the times in these guys are telling that there is a, a boost, uh, you know, a turbo problem. But also, as I said before, they recommend to inspect uh, all the turbo plumbing for leaks. It is recommended to pull each fitting and connection to make sure that there are no leaks. Well, I will do a smoke test on the system. Uh, I wanted to show what the values are. This is uh, the back pressure that they're saying, you know, if you have the scanner, which I do have. You can have even 2,000 uh, ectopascals or 29 PSI. That will be the back pressure. And then you have also information in here. These are folders for different damages in the turbo veins. But this is a chart. Uh, actually, let me see. No, that's not the one I pick up. The flow chart in here. This is the flow chart that probably this is from Sentry itself. But they put them into a nice... Uh, Again, flow chart of what to do. So they tell you if you have the 2510 or 2359 or 2616, then the step one, perform a sound test. APK will be the exhaust manifold. Make sure that we don't have a you know metal clattering inside, which means that we have broken veins or a damaged catalytic converter. Uh, if the answer is yes, then you have to replace the ATL, which is the turbo, and the exhaust manifold, most likely because it's full of the parts. If the answer is no, then produce a record performance data of the exhaust back pressure. Is the exhaust back, back pressure more than 2,000 hectopascals? Then yes, replace the turbo. Uh, if no, then you follow this. So, my next step was to check, you know, Sentry. This is just a simulation. I don't have it connected to the car, but I can, you know, read the codes. So, or check for the codes. And what they are telling me to do is uh, pretty much to put a, a pressure test. I can do a smoke pressure test on this system. And they tell you what to do. Make sure the car is not running, that you're not going to switch the ignition on. Uh, Doing this test, they tell you to put it right here, right the turbo inlet, and then slowly build up pressure and check for leaks. So, I think that's going to be my next step. Again, I think that this is going to be the issue with the vehicle. I didn't like the way the car is shifting, no matter what. So, but let me do this first, and we go from there. So, I'm going to set up the smoke machine on the car. And I'll set you guys on the camera so you, you can enjoy watching me work too. Alright guys, uh, back in the car. Um, I have the scanner right here, so it's kind of like to zoom in. Alright, so we're going to go over to lead data. I was reading the information on um, identifix in a Sentry. That, you know, these uh, exhaust back, back pressure, the boost pressure, the intake air pressure, they should be, and the atmospheric pressure, they should be very close in between each other, no more than, um, 
Well, this is changing because the engine is a little hot, so and it's atmospheric, sorry. Like around 40 hectopascals difference, so we are in between that range. That is a way that you can check for a, a damage back pressure sensor, boost pressure sensor, or so on. So then the next text that I want to do before taking the intakes apart and putting, you know, a smoke text, a uh, smoke, smoke test machine in here. Sorry, I'm a little tired. Long day. So I wanted to see the movement on the Bane or booster Bane control motor, which is this one right here. That's an actuator. So for this one, we need to start the car. Let me turn it on. Uh, the car is running. For experience, uh, the car is going to look to do a, uh, well, before that I want to also show you, because on the test drive I found some other things that I didn't put attention on before. Look at this value on the uh, back pressure, uh, reading again on sentry and uh, an identifix. You have to be very careful when you're doing diagnosis on this system. This uh, has a DPF uh, system, which is diesel particle filter in it. If that gets clogged, it will give you lack of power, lean pull mode. So you have to be careful with that too. All right, so um, I know on the balance is a little hard to, to know. Let me show you the test that I want to do. Let us just leave data. Let's go over to uh, active test. And in here we're going to pick up the Y77-1, that's the boost pressure actuator. Let me get you guys close to, close to the car, sorry for the noise. Let me put some light in here so you guys can see. So what we're going to be looking for, again, uh, the engine is going to go up to 1400 RPMs by itself. So you got to follow the step by step, the step on the test. And then you're going to see the mechanism work. So first of all, I'm going to get into the test so you guys can see it. So we got the 1400 RPMs in there. So what you got to do is first press the F3, then F4, and then abort. So with F3, we have to see a drop in pressure. So I'm going to pressure. I'm going to press it. And we're seeing that, you know, the pressure on the push is uh, coming down. Now F4 should raise it up. I heard an engine difference in there for sure. So these tell me that at least the mechanism on the turbo and the bins itself right now are moving, moving good. You can abort by uh, pressing F12. And now I'm going to show you the mechanism. Hope you guys can hear me. So I'm going to press the F3 first again, and then you saw that the pressure dropped, and I'm going to press F4 now. I don't see, so right now we are in F4, again, press the F12 to abort and then escape, that's going to make the idle come to normal. So. At first, I thought I was having a little bit of a, you know, binding on, on the veins because of the code we have, but it's not the case. It's moving back and forth really. I even removed the linkage by, you know, don't. One thing you have to be very careful when you're doing uh, this test is never move that lever with your hand, otherwise you will be damaging internal gear. So if you guys cannot hear me, I'm going to repeat, as you know, when you're doing this test, it's only with the scanner. Don't ever move that linkage with your hand, otherwise you're going to uh, damage the actuator gear inside. So be careful with that. And I was saying that I removed the linkage. It has a cutter pin in here, right there that you can remove without, you know, moving here. Just going to move the link. And I couldn't feel, couldn't feel any, any problem with that. So let me turn the car off. So we get less noisy and I'm going to show you guys also one of the recordings on the test drive. Let me get out of here. That was a test. So for me that test passed well. 
um, so we go over to here we're gonna go over to uh, data manager and then we have here hopefully this is the one let me see there's pressure let me see if this is the one yeah this is the one it's got to find a sweet spot so what I wanted to do I'm focus you guys on on these uh, back pressure sensor so I'm going to put you know a gauge so you can see the values maximum is 4700 at least with the gauge look at right there okay so that's perfect we have in there 3891 hectopascals I hope I'm saying that correctly forgive me if I'm doing if I'm saying it wrong but as far as the manufacturer is telling me to never have more than 2000 hectopascals this is like 58 pounds of back pressure one other thing that I wanted to see um, let me go back to normal I don't know if I know I didn't save this 